Hey, I'm Dane Campbell. I play drums in Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. I want to give a big fuck you to the hunters. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to our video. Today I'm going to be interviewing Dane Campbell from the band Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks, man. How are you? I'm doing good as well. I'm glad to have you on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for asking me on. You're welcome. Hey. Um, so my first question was, do you, besides, of course, the new album dropping soon, do you have any new projects coming up? Well, at the moment, I've been fairly quiet with musical projects. Um, yeah, we've got the new album from Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons coming out in November, November the 13th. Um, other than that, apart from there's a few guys I play in like a covers band with that that's obviously very quiet at the moment because of all the lockdown situation. I don't know what it's like with you, but it's, it's pretty strict in the UK, especially in Wales where I live. Oh, I'm, I actually, see. I'm not actually allowed to leave my county at the moment unless, oh, it's, wow. for, unless it's for work. Yeah. So, and so I'd say it's maybe like a 40 mile square you know roughly the size of the county so i'm not really i'm not, I'm not really supposed to leave that at the moment <laughs> oh, no one's allowed to come in right so, yeah over here it's not that strict but um it's also pretty strict you know no concerts obviously i mean yeah. um i don't think that's allowed anywhere um no, the only ones i've seen i've got a friend who plays in like a blues band and he's recently gone out to Sweden and he's played, I guess, smaller concerts, but it's when everyone's sitting down on tables. So oh, right. Like socially distanced, I suppose. Um, they're the only ones I've really seen, um, but he's managed to do it. So cool. Yeah, other than that, no mosh bits anytime soon, I, I, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, think, I don't think our shows would work like that. No, no. Not at all. Now, rock shows in general, just sitting down, that'd, that'd be boring. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, but other, otherwise, I've just been concentrating on my own podcast, um, which I started up at the beginning of lockdown, I guess. Um, it, there was an idea I had. I had the idea a year ago when I was playing lots of festivals, and we were sharing stages with all these big bands, and I'd look, they'd all be like backstage behind the stage, there'd be all these um, different drum risers. And then they'd all, there'd be like Limp Bizkit's drum kit there and then Megadeth's drum kit and Slayer's drum kit. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And I was like, maybe at the time I was listening to a lot of podcasts. I was like, oh, maybe I could start one someday and interviewing other drummers. I think that would be cool. Um, there are a few other ones out there, but at the time I didn't know there was so many podcast like that at the time maybe they they weren't as many back then but um i just been too busy being on tour myself to really start and plan and buy the equipment so lockdown started we weren't playing any shows all our shows got cancelled or postponed so i thought like now is the time to start because you can like like we're doing it over zoom now i thought well like yeah. no reason why i can't do that so i, I bought like a cheap microphone to start off with and, um, you know, luckily I've got some contacts in the industry from my band and my dad. And it's worked out pretty well so far. It's still building very slowly. So, I'm, you know, I'm not getting thousands of listens yet, but maybe we'll get one there. day. Maybe, hopefully. I'm trying. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'll put the link uh, in the description to all of the, like, there is, it's on YouTube and Spotify, maybe? or Yeah, there's YouTube, Spotify, they're on Apple, Deezer, kind of all the main ones. Um, right. I don't know. There's a few I, I might need to look into. So if anyone tries to search on their app and I'm not on there, let me know and I'll try and get it on there. Awesome. But all the mainstream ones should be there. And Acast. Yeah, cool. Okay. And um, when did you start playing drums and what inspired you to I started playing drums when I think I was five or six years old. Uh, my dad, who can also play drums, he was originally a drummer before playing guitar. He taught me some of the basics 
on a drum kit we had in our gar in our gar in our garage. Um, and I have an older brother who, who also plays in the band. He plays guitar. And I think it was just natural for me to play drums so we could jam together. So we used to play in our garage. I would be on drums and my brother would play guitar and then my dad would play bass. And we used to just jam together. And I think that's how I learned, really. I didn't really have lessons at all when I was younger. I wish I had had lessons back then, but I just went off what my dad had taught me, some of the basics, and just listening to other musicians and lots of music. But yeah, I was about five or six. And um, back then as well, when my dad wasn't on tour with Motorhead, he had a local covers band. So he used to play like small pubs and small gigs with his friends, maybe only a few times a year, maybe five times a year. And sometimes my family and I would go to the shows, to the pubs, and I'd go up and play a song on drums. So I'd, I'd actually go up as like a guest drummer when I was like six or seven, um, nice. just to play one song. It was pretty cool. But it, what it did do, it gave me experience performing in front of an audience and performing live and with different musicians. And I guess that gave me a, a bit of a head start. And then a few years later, uh, fortunately, my, my dad bought us a Roland electronic kit that we had in the house. So I used to come home from school and put my headphones on and I used to play along to different albums of some of my favorite bands and stuff like that. So I, I learned that way. Um, nice. But yeah, that's, that's the story, the backstory. And I've been playing in bands since I was 13. Yeah, I, uh, I can kind of relate to that. Like um, what you said about playing in a pub every once in a while. Yeah. Um, because when you're that young, you don't really have, I feel like you don't really are shy at that age yet yeah um, that's true so i would always i started doing youtube like way back in the day and um i think that also kind of prepared me to be in front of a camera because if you ask me for advice to on how to be more comfortable in front of a camera i really couldn't tell you because i can't imagine being shy for a camera you know because yeah, I've, yeah. I've never been shy to be in front of a camera nice Nice. Yeah, yeah that's, I, it's, it's very similar, like playing on stage. And I guess, it's, well, I was actually quite shy about talking in public and being on camera doing these podcasts before I started doing them. Because to be honest, playing on stage behind the drum kit, I feel like I'm, I'm hiding in the back a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. I don't think I'd be very comfortable playing on stage or playing guitar or singing at the front of the stage. I think that would scare me a little bit. And I always used to shy away from doing band interviews. Um, I don't know why, but I just, I was never very comfortable doing them. But I'm just trying to get through that now. And I think I've, I've pushed through that barrier and now I don't care. So awesome. I'm, up for any, I'm up for anything. I don't really care how I look. I don't care how I sound. So Yeah, you should just be yourself. Exactly, yeah. So I, I, that's, how I, that's how I feel really, so. Yeah, for me, I've I have the microphone to hide behind oh, okay. in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> I know I've got a bit of a, a crappy setup here. I have a, I've just got a laptop on a little IKEA table, little round table that I <laughs> I move around the house depending on when I'm doing it, and a little um, tripod stand for my microphone. But if well, I, have, I, if I, I won't. I've move had it worse now. setups. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it, it does the job, and it's mobile, so that's what's good about it. Yeah, for sure. But it'd be nice to have a, a nice desk. One Maybe <laughs> um, once you can go back to touring, you can uh, take the setup with you. Who knows? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, it's, po it's very possible. Yeah. And um, how does the new Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons album differ from the others? Um, I wouldn't say it was too different. I think we're one of those bands where I think if we did something radically different, the fans would kind of maybe disapprove, maybe. Um, it's still, it, 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 the production is very different. It's a bit more of an old school production, whereas our first album, which was called Age of Absurdity, had a very modern production to it, especially when it came to the drums. Um, but yeah, it sounds great and it was mixed really well. But this is a little bit different. It's a little bit more organic sounding. Uh, again, big guitars. Maybe the drums are not quite as big on this album. 
but I don't mind, even though I'm the drummer. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, the songs, you know, they're still, we, we try and make accessible, kind of catchy, but not, we try not to be cheesy, kind of heavy rock music. Um, there are a few tracks that are more punky, I guess, like fast punk, like some of the faster motorhead nice. punky songs. So we kind of, obviously we're influenced by that. And a lot of our audience came from the Motorhead audience. So I think we try to please them, but we try and be ourselves as well. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there are a few, there are a few tracks that, that are a little bit different. Um, one of the songs, which I think is going to be a single, it's called Born to Rome. So when that comes out, you can check that out for yourself. It's a little bit different sounding. It was originally, the, the working title was The Country Song. So I'll leave that with whatever you think that might be. But that might surprise a few people. It just sounds a little bit different. Um, it, but that reminds cool. me of, um, of like uh, Whore Eyes Blues on, on the Inferno album. Like yeah, that sort of was um, little... it's a little bit rockier than that. It's not as laid back as okay. that song. But yeah, that's, that's a great song. Um, it's just the, I don't really know where they came from. It, it was based on like a, a bendy guitar riff. Um, and I put a kind of a two-handed, kind of bouncy uh, drum beat over the top. And I don't play any other songs with like two hands on the hi-hat with this band. This is the first song I've ever done that. Um, but I, it, it, it kind of jumps out to you at little different places. And it's got a good chorus and stuff, so... It was one of those songs that when we were writing, I thought it was just going to be like just a, a standard album track. But when it was finished, I think a few of us agreed that I think this has to be a single, which awesome. is interesting. I don't know if it'll be received as well by the, the kind of heavier fans that like the heavier stuff, but we're willing to give it a try. Who knows? We, we want to attract new people as well. You know, we want to attract new fans. Exactly. So if someone hears us on the radio or a rock radio station that isn't into us already, they might like that song and check us out. So we can't just reproduce the same stuff constantly because I would. Oh, be yeah. But we, yeah. we're trying to stay within, I guess, a certain style within reason, I guess, if that makes sense. Cool. I can't wait to hear the album. Thanks, man. <laughs> Um, and what was it like working together with Rob Halford and Alice Cooper on the album Old Line Still Roar? Yeah, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm, I'm playing drums on those tracks, but it was all done um, oh, yeah. by, by email. <laughs> so um, they, I think they did their parts, whatever they live in LA probably or yeah. in the US. <laughs> and it was all done. Um, there were a few guys that came to my brother's studio. Um, Chris Fenn from Slipknot. Oh yeah, that's cool. He was, he was in Slipknot at the time. He's not anymore. But that's another no, fortunately. story. That's another story. But um, he came to the studio and did his parts. Um, and there was a few other guys. Uh, Benji Webb from Skin Dread. I think he came to the studio. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of those guys are overseas, obviously. And they did it all uh, via email. But um, it's amazing knowing that I'm on a on two, on two tracks with those guys. Oh yeah. Um, um, and I think they, they ended up being singles as well. So yeah, it's kind of a nice feeling because at the time I played drums on a lot of the demos for, for that album. And at the time we didn't know who was singing on which songs, but you know, I was just playing the demos for them. And then I guess my dad decided, Oh, I quite like the drums on that. I quite like the drums on that. We might as well keep those. Or I think some of them I re-recorded. Because when I played them, I was just kind of rushing it. You know, I wasn't really, I didn't have time to think of my parts properly. But yeah, knowing that I'm playing on songs with those guys, it looks good for me and I can't help it. But I don't have any cool stories, sadly. No, it's not, not like you yeah. were jamming with them in the studio nah, or something. Nah, unfortunately. I have met Alice Cooper once or maybe twice when I was... Uh, yeah, well, very briefly. It's not even a very cool story. So I'm not <laughs> going to tell you. But yeah, I have met him. I've never met Rob Halford, though, but he's meant to be a very nice guy. <laughs> Maybe one day on the, like yeah, a festival so. or something. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Or take us on tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 
So, yeah, that would be amazing if you could tour with, with Priest. That'd be yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. And um, what are some of your personal favorite uh, metal musicians? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, metal musicians. Well, drummer-wise, that's quite strange because metal drummers, I've been mainly influenced by, I guess it's just the bands I grew up listening to. So obviously Mickey D from Motorhead, if you class him as being a metal drummer, I think he can play metal. So yeah. He's, he's probably... Um one of my favorite metal drummers. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. And I guess it's just some of the stuff with Motorhead was less metal, but then he did all that. He did uh, Halloween and King Diamond and stuff. That's metal. Yeah, so he, he influenced me a lot. Uh, I guess when I was growing up, I did used to listen to a lot of Metallica. So I know Lars gets a lot of stick, but he's got such a unique style, um, especially the stuff he did that was less less thrashy, like from Load and Reload. And, and oh, I love those album. albums. Yeah, I, lo I love them. Um, I think I'm probably influenced more by that style than the older kind of more thrash style. Um, but when I go and listen to like Battery, for example, I don't know how the hell he played that. Like <laughs> I, I tried jamming along to it. I'm like, I can't do it, can't do it. Um, I don't know where the... It was a feel thing, but I couldn't quite make sense to how the, the, the mathematics in my head would work. But yeah, man, he's, he, he was a pioneer of his time. Um, but I really like the rock stuff he did. He's got his own style. When you hear him play, you know it's him. He gets a lot of criticism nowadays for maybe not being as tight or as good as he once was. But, you know, it's hard. It's, he's, you know, he's an older, you know, he's probably in his 50s now. If, yeah, Maybe. something like that. It's bound to be. And it's hard to keep that stuff up. So, oh, yeah. And, and drumming is so physical, and you need stamina and you need all over body strength and micro muscles. So, you know, and things like that, unfortunately, they, they die away as you get older. So, yeah, especially with like rock, rock bands and stuff, because you need to play fast as well, you know? Yeah, you need to play fast and hard. And it's really bad for your joints. Like, I'm, I'm, 33 now so i'm not old but i'm not young either and i've had shoulder problems i've had knee problems already so i'm worried about what's what's going to come in the next decade <laughs> right two, you know so but yeah um otherwise i'd say they're the two main ones that come to mind that i think have influenced my drumming specifically um i like a lot more like rock drummers you know like dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins and, but you know, bands that I, I listen to a little bit later on and I hate to say it, but you know, I used to listen to a lot of Travis Barker records, Blink-182. That's, that's the stuff I used to come home from school with and play along to that. But that was good because that got my speed up by playing the awesome. fa fast Blink songs. I think got, well, it definitely got my speed up and I felt more natural playing fast faster beats than I guess maybe other people that hadn't bothered trying. There's so many great drummers out there and um, it's hard to name them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there yeah, are a lot. They're, they're the obvious ones, definitely. Yeah, and awesome. Then, maybe, maybe the guy from Muse. Uh, I, why can't I remember his name? Dom Howard. He's a really great drum drummer. Um, he doesn't show off, but he's he's got really interesting beats that goes it goes really well with the music nice so he's, he's definitely an influence as well yeah i don't really listen to to muse all that much honestly yeah. i don't anymore but i when i was younger they were one of my favorite favorite bands and i guess the last few records i probably haven't listened to but the older stuff i used to love it awesome it was such a unique sound at the time you know but yeah i guess people take it for granted now but when it came out it was it was like wow this is different and that's with a lot of things that over time, it just becomes normal, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's true. I think, unfortunately, they're one of those bands that, yeah, like I said, they get taken for granted. They kind of created their own sound. They had lots of hits. They sold lots of records. Um, and people just think, oh, Moves. I'm like, they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, go, if you go to see a live show, they're always fantastic. Awesome. So, yeah, man. And... Um, if you could get rid of one thing in the world, what would it be? 
<laughs> oh, one thing that I really hate, um, I don't know a hell of a lot about it, but I definitely think it doesn't need to exist. It's like trophy hunting when people just shoot wild animals oh, and, yeah. and to put, to put, make them into a rug. I just don't see the point in that. I'm not into that at all. So that would be, that would be definitely, I know it's illegal in like certain countries, but they get away with it somehow. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't need to exist. I don't think anyone should. Oh no. That. So no. it fits I, the know, print I, in the background. Yeah, well, that's a fake one. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that's my wife's choice, you know. But um, yeah, but I just don't understand why anyone would find pleasure in doing oh, that. Oh no, me really. neither. I don't, I don't get it, man. I, I, I quite like animals. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't eat them. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to shoot one. So. Oh, me neither. So, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course. So if you shoot anim animals, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Put it no there. worries. Put it there. No worries. <laughs> I, I hope no one turns off listening to this because of that. <laughs> I think more people will tune in now. <laughs> ah, cool. That's cool. Man. And uh, what's some advice you would like to give to young and upcoming drummers? Yeah, uh, that's always a good question. Um, I w even though I didn't have lessons, I would recommend getting some lessons earlier on as they will help where well, they will stop you from picking up bad habits that lots of self taught drummers like myself probably did. Um, you need to look, you need to concentrate on your posture a lot. Like I'm slouching now cause I have to bend down to speak to the mic, but I think me and a lot of other drummers tend to slouch when we're playing. So our, our, instead of our back being straight, it's like that. I don't think that's good for you. Um, this is all to kind of prevent injuries later on. Always, if you've got a gig or a long practice session, at least do some stretches on your wrists and your fingers and, and your arms and your neck and things like that. Because maybe when you're younger, you don't realize you're doing damage because maybe you don't feel the pain, but you, it's so repetitive. All the movements are very repetitive and you, you're using force. And every time you're hitting something, you know, your, your body is taking an impact. And especially if it's in the wrong position or maybe, a, maybe, not, maybe not a wrong position, but the, if it's not in an ideal position, you're just going to do more damage. So that's, that's the main thing. And if you're like writing your own music in a band, just listen to the other instruments before doing your own parts. Um, because I think you'll write better drum parts that way. Try not to get in the way of the other instruments and especially the vocals. That's, that's one thing I, I aim to do. Um, like, for example, if the singer is singing like a melody, I wouldn't do a drum fill over that. I try and wait for the gaps in between the vocals and try and place one where I think nothing else is happening. So it gives right. me space to do one, you know, um, that, that's basically, yeah, there are a lot of, you know, great drummers out there and they can do lots of weird and wonderful things. And they got all the technique and skills. Like, I don't know how to do a lot of that. I'll admit that I've never really learned a lot of the technical skills. I don't know all my rudiments. Um, but this goes back to not having lessons when I was younger, but, um, yeah, but as a as a rock drummer in a band, I think I I do quite well. I hope. <laughs> yeah, that's, I like lots it. Of pe lots of people think so anyway. So thanks, man. But yeah, that, that's that's my best advice. Awesome. And um, where do you hope to see yourself and the band in ten years? Ten years. Oh god, I think we we'd be lucky if we're still going in ten years. But <laughs> it, it's all down to my. Obviously, my dad's getting a little bit older. Um, I think he's sixty years old next year. So. It all depends on how, how he's feeling and if he still wants to be playing. Um, obviously, the rest of us will be okay. But in 10, in 10 years, he's going to be 69, 70 years old. So whether he's going to be happy enough to travel around with us playing, I don't know yet. Um, 
but maybe if we can, you know, I'd love, to, I'd, I'd love to get to this stage where we're playing like really good slots on main stage, big festivals by then, if we're still going. Um, it's difficult, but it's hard. But we're trying to push ourselves as our own band, original band. We're not trying to push ourselves as a motorhead cover band. Oh, yeah. I, th I think a lot of people are branded as, as being at the start. We still play some motorhead songs because the fans want to hear some motorhead songs. But we want to push our own music. Um, I guess if we can re release a record maybe every two years, that would be a good aim. So by then, we'll have a big catalog of songs. So yeah, I'd love, I'd love, well, I just love to still be making a living out of it if I can. Nice. Um, at the moment, obviously this year, there's a bit of a write off. I've had to get a, another job to pay my bills and stuff. Um, which sucks, but I don't mind doing it. You know, I'm not the only person <laughs> that's had to, had to do that. But you know, luckily we've, we've had an album to keep ourselves busy and hopefully we can sell a few copies. So <laughs> that'll, that'll help. Um, but yeah, if I if I'm still if I could still make a living playing drums by then would be great. If the band's still together, even better. But if the band's not together, if I could join another band or start a new band and still be making a living, that would be my goal. Awesome. So Thanks. basically, just making a living out of music and things. Oh yeah, I, I I don't really want to be doing this normal job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sucks, man. So. Yeah. It's, Is there anything difficult. you? Well, yeah, it's the only thing I'm good at, really, is the, is the drumming. And I'm not even that good at that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm good enough. I could play in a rock band. And a lot of people tell me, why don't you go into teaching drums? I'm like, I don't know enough to teach someone. Right. Unless, they, unless they wanted really, unless they said up front, I want really casual lessons. I don't want to learn any theory or music theory. Then maybe we could have some fun and I could teach them some things I know. But most people don't really want that. So, but maybe one day. Who knows? But at, the, at the moment, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Uh, well, not, uh, not really. Um, just a reminder, if, if anyone's interested in any of my stuff, the, the podcast called, is called Drum for the Song. I've interviewed some great drummers so far. Um, Nigel Glockler from Saxon. Ryan Richards from Funeral for a Friend, which is a great Welsh band. Uh, Matt Sorum, who's in Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver and The Cult. So that was an amazing interview for me. Um, and yeah, loads of, loads of other guys. By, I don't know when this is going out, but I'm releasing new, new episodes every two weeks. So that's what I'm aiming for anyway. So yeah, just check it out and let me know if, if, let me know if you heard about me on this show as well. That'll be interesting to know. Awesome. And, uh, Keep supporting Roger and his shows and his channel and what, whatever you, whatever you use. What what are you on anyway? What you YouTube. On YouTube? Yeah, maybe. just YouTube. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm on Instagram as well and stuff like that. But it's the videos and and you know the main idea and concept. It's all on YouTube. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's good. I'll have to hit you up. I need some tips for YouTube, so I'll send you a message. <laughs> that's cool, man. I, I need some more subscribers. So if anyone wants to subscribe to me on YouTube as well, it's Drum, Drum for the Song is the name of the channel. That'd be very Give helpful. them a watch. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Again, the link's in the description. Thank you awesome. so much for your time, man. No worries, man. Thanks, Roger. Cheers. You're welcome. Waited this long. Hell no longer awaits. <laughs>